Hello and welcome. Um, it's Friday and so it's another episode of News from the Gelding. Now, it's two weeks um, until the official release of my book. So this week I've been doing the final preparations towards that. Um, the book itself was written and done and dusted a long time ago. Um, I don't know, maybe nine months ago that was all done. So ever since then, I've been working towards everything else. So the interior, the some illustrations inside, um, I made the website. Um, but the biggest thing has been formatting for the print edition of the book and the cover. Um, so this week I've been spending a bit more time on the painting. Um, there it is. Um, I'll show you. It's almost done now. There we go. It's a bit more detail there. Put lots more detail on the main trunk of the treehouse thing. The um, details of the bark um, and the buildings. The buildings are currently an underpainting. I've got to go over that one more time. But it's almost there now. So the problem is uh, that's taken, I began the painting a month ago, uh, I think today, um, but in real terms, it's, it's taken me about 18 hours of work to get it to that point. And as I've said before, because I'm using oil paints, I'm having to wait a long time to dry in between layers. It's, it's an absolute pain. Um, and I'm seriously considering getting some acrylic paints for next time because I could have had that painting done in under a week um, rather than it dragging on for a whole month. But I've been able to fit other things in around it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to finish that on Saturday and then I can do the final build of the cover. Now, I've already got a cover that I've been using a mock-up of cover, which is more or less complete. And for that, I used an illustration, I'll show it actually. I used an illustration of, someone's car up my house, right? Um, that I, the original drawing, and then I colorized it in Photoshop. Now, if I compare, no, I can't compare, but yeah, so that's um, more or less how it's going to look. So in effect, I've spent a whole month just working towards an illustration that's going to look more or less the same. But I'm a bit of a, um, what you call it, control freak in some ways, perfectionist. And, and I had this idea that I'd try and do the a painting to, to make the illustration as good as possible. But because it's shrunk down so so much on onto a cover, there probably won't be a great deal of difference. But next week, I'll, I'll show you the finished cover. And you, I'll, we'll compare them there and see if it was worth me uh, spending all that time doing it. Um, another reason why I've shown you the this mock-up cover is that I've I've got a pre-order going. So for the ebook, so if you want to pre-order it, there's a link below. To be quite honest, I'd rather if you are going to buy it, um, if you fancy buying it, I would maybe wait until the release date of the 9th. So Friday in two weeks time, because I want it when um, the more sales you get within a single day, the higher up you're going, the rankings and um, the more likely your book will be seen by other people. The problem is that this pre-order situation, I assumed that the pre-orders would all take effect on the day of release. And so it would bump up the figures, but it, that's not the way it's going to work. So pre-orders are kind of, Mm, they're not really going to be contributing to the sales ranking. Um, the, the reason I'm kind of try, hoping to get a bit of a bump on that one day at least is that if you don't do that, you just, you're just you buried right beneath a sea of millions of other books. Um, if I take the example of my the other book I've got, my uh, Raining Sushi and Donuts, which was... Uh, about my cycle ride across Japan. I think the sales ranking for that one is about um, four million or something, <laughs> like something stupid. So, I mean, it's it's never going to be found. It's never going to come up in searches unless someone's actively looking for it. 
So with this new book, I don't want that to happen right from the get go. So anyway, that, that was, so the pre-order thing was a waste of time. But if you want to do it, go for it. It'd be lovely. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. So um, I'm, now I'm going to show you some of the proof copies I've been um, working from to try and get the print edition to where I want it to be. But that's been um, a bit of a nightmare in itself. So I've got three of them now. Uh, first thing I'll show you is that, well, I'll show you each one in turn, but each one had a problem. So the first one, um, I chose this glossy cover, which is quite nice. It makes the blacks very black, which is a nice thing. But otherwise, I'm not keen on all that reflection going on. Um, and it's very dark. It shouldn't be that dark, the image. <clears throat> and on the back, as I showed you the other day, there should be another picture there, and it's, it's, it's just not there at all. Um, the spine is pretty good, but it's uh, you can probably see it's not quite centered, uh, which was very annoying. So I tried another one. So I've got another one back. This time I went for a matte finish. There you go. So I think mean, that looks a lot better, to be honest. Um, you can get that not for resale ribbon across it doesn't really matter um still a bit dark though and the blacks weren't really black enough um and on the back this time you can see the image a bit better but it's still very dark so i was kind of scratching my head at this point thinking what's going on oh the spine i'll show you the spine as well that's pretty good that's pretty centered that, that's 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 fine it's it's off by a millimeter or so but there's not much you can do about that so I tried one more time um, and I got this one back. I changed the font a bit to make it a little bit more um, kind of fancy. It's a bit more detail. You, you can't, probably can't see on this um, camera. Um, but next week I'll show you the full resolution one. Um, again, it's a little bit lighter, but not a great deal. So um, on the back I went for just to see what color would look like. So I took an early stage of the painting and stuck on the back but it, it's it's all a bit muted and this time the spine look, is off by quite a bit it's not in the middle is it and so it's all shifted across and so it's also meant that the circular window in this on the front cover is also skewed back this way if you can see it's all very annoying um and and so i'm working from a, a template um issued by Amazon for this purpose um, and so there's no there's no way of deviating any further from it I mean I'm, I've gone to the to the pixel so sub millimeter levels um, but uh, one issue another possible issue these are all eight by five inch um, versions it's the lower it's the smallest print size they do but it's the most similar to the size you might buy in a shop. So it'll look, it'll look good on a shelf. And that's what I want. I don't want it to, a lot of them are massive. <clears throat> if you've got it on a shelf, it's just going to stick out like a sore thumb and it's just going to look silly. But even with this 8x5 version, if I show you, I've got them lined up. See, they're all different, slightly different sizes. And between this one and this one, there's about four millimeters of difference between the two. And so you can also see it on the side there. Yeah, see that? They should all be flush with one another. I don't know why. And they're all coming from the same same place. They're coming from, for Europe, I, I'm assuming it's the whole of Europe. Um, it's a place in Poland um, that, are, that are printing and binding these things. And I suppose it depends on the machines being used and the person that's operating the machine. That's the only thing I can think it might be. Um, but I finally realized why it's getting, the colors are too dark. Um, I've been working from, um, in Photoshop, I was working from an RGB mode, which means you're, you're using colors that are generated on, on a screen. So, uh, screen colors, but then I realized you have to use, um, what is it? CMYK. So it's, it's the, it's the print standard print format used 
for printing. So it's um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so you're working with concentrations of those inks. Therefore, um, because the screen is backlit, it's shining through what will be pigments and giving you a false sense of the saturation and uh, contrast levels, things like that. Um, so the only way of truly knowing what it's going to be like is to print a version of it. So you can use your home printer if you've got one and um, you can get a, an idea or a feel for what the colors are going to look like. So obviously mine have all been, they're, they're too dark. So I'm going to do one more uh, proof copy before the release just to make sure it's okay. But I think I know what I'm doing now. And the same goes for black, uh, the color, the black colors. Um, you select what appears to be black on Photoshop, for example, um, and it's, you know, it's the lowest register on the scale, so you assume it's black, but it's not actually completely black in terms of um, the pigments that will be laid on top. So you have to use a certain formula um, to get a black black. The ones I've got there are kind of bluish or reddish blacks, and you know, to the eye, you can see straight away that it's not fully black enough. Yeah, so those are all problems I've had to deal with um, uh, for the last few weeks. But anyway, we're almost there now. Um, so the last thing I'll talk about now is um, pricing. So I want to be fully transparent about the way I'm pricing these books. Um, and how much I'll be getting and how much Amazon will be getting, which is quite an interesting thing in itself. So if we first of all take the ebook, um, that's being sold for three pound twenty. Now that's set, it's a strange amount, I know, but um, it, the way you do it is you you pick one marketplace, so usually America, the American market, um, and you set a price there, and then the price is then rolled out across all the other marketplaces determined by their currency. And so I've set it to $3.99 in America, which translates to £3.20 in the UK. Now, so um, in the UK and in Europe, I'm sure it's the same in other parts of the world as well. I don't know about America, but um, eBooks since 2015 have been um, liable for um, VAT, value added tax. So that's, so off that £3.20, 20% goes straight away. See, Amazon, as the seller of the book, should be paying that VAT or accounting for the VAT on that book. But they've transferred it on to us, on to the, the uh, suppliers or the writers or suppliers. Um, so, yeah, so that's the first chunk that comes off. So that takes it down to £2.56. And then up, out of that, then I... I get the, then you have the royalty arrangement with Amazon, which, which on the surface is quite a good um, amount. So it's 70% for the author and 30% goes to Amazon. So that, that brings it to £1.79. But there's one more little bit of the cake that uh, Amazon wants, and that is the delivery fee. Um, and believe it or not, they, they charge the, the author a delivery fee based on the size of the file, the ebook file. And it's 10 pence per megabyte. Luckily, my, I've managed to keep mine to about a megabyte. So that's another 10p off. So what I'm getting is in the end of it all, £1.69 from that £3.20 and Amazon get £1.51. So it's almost, it's kind of a half and half split after all of those deductions. I'll say one more thing about this um, delivery charge thing. It's it's quite annoying really, because if you go on the, on Amazon's page, they say, make sure your images are as high quality as possible, um, which, which obviously means the file size are gonna jump up. Um, I'm assuming they want it to be as high as possible so they're getting more of this delivery nonsense fee. Um, but what if if you're another 
writer thinking of doing this, make sure you get your images compressed, you know, and they don't have to be um, pixel perfect because, you know, you know, people, most people are going to be viewing them on um, e-readers or phones or whatever. So they're not going to be projecting on the side of a wall. So that all that. So that's the ebook. Now, the print copy is going to be retailing for £8.99. Now, I know that's quite a lot, really, um, as as paperbacks go. I know it's 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 in the ballpark. I know um, you get, um, you know, I've, I've seen books for £7.99 um, and up, upwards of £8 as well, even £9 sometimes. Um, so how much of that am I getting? Well, not much, I'm afraid. <laughs> so with with paperbacks, there's no VAT uh, situation. So then we go to the royalty situation where you have Amazon will give you 60% royalty on the $8.99, which is, sounds really good. So that's £5.39. But out of that, you then take the printing costs for the book, which for my book, depending on the page count, which is 344, um, that's another £4.14 off. So at the end of it all, I'll get £1.25 per print book and Amazon will have £7.74. See, there's another annoying little thing with this in that I assumed that the £8.99, the first thing would happen is the print cost comes off and then the royalty would be split between the rest of it. But no, um, royalty happens first, and then, and then your print costs come off that, off your side of the royalty. It's, it doesn't seem entirely fair to me, but because um, all it means is it, it's bumping up the price for the customer. Um, I mean, if I were to sell it for seven ninety nine, I think I, I can't remember how much I'd be getting. I mean, it's seventeen pence or something like that. So I had to strike a balance between the two. Um, so yeah, that's what I've gone for. Um, I'd be I'd be interested to hear people's views about this, about you know whether in terms of pricing of what you think would be fair uh, price um, in both both counts. I've I've tried to keep them both pretty low, as low as I can really. Um, but yeah, um, and I was, and I. I'm not going to be making very much at all from these print books, but they're, it was important for me to have a print version because I have a Kindle, but I do prefer reading um, paper paperbacks, and I think most people do prefer them. They prefer to have it in their hands and to, you know, to take their time, you know, flicking back to the map, for example, which is quite easy to do in a paperback. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that's where it is, where it is. So um, I'll stop here. Um, this has been a ramble fest. Oh, God. Yeah, it's quite high. Um, very quickly, next week, I'm going to have a time lapse film of this painting being done. And, and I'll have the final cover reveal. So until then, I'll bid you good day and uh, cheerio.